it is guys, it's your boy Blast from Sage D. And today, we are here to check out something you guys have been wanting me to watch for the longest time. It's called Casually Explained. Today, this video is called How to Have a Normal Conversation. This guy is one of the funniest dating coaches of all of online. I've been listening to his advice for seven years now. I have never gotten laid. It's definitely sounds like it's moving in the right direction, but actually probably not. Let's do this. Knowing how to interact with a stranger doesn't always come naturally, which is why I thought it would be a good idea to talk about how to have a normal conversation in the only way I know how, which is through a seven minute monologue. Reason being is pretty much whenever I go out in the real world, I say to myself, you know, today is the day that a nice stranger might come up and have a conversation with me. And that's simply not a risk I'm willing to take. But despite my best <laughs> efforts to look like this guy, I've realized that no matter how much you try to look like someone who just wants to go about their own business, the earbuds in, no eye contact strategy can only take you so far. As an example, I was in the elevator the other day taking my bicycle out, and this guy was like, nice bike, is it fast? And I was like, yeah man, pretty fast. And then he said, probably not as fast as my car. And then he waddled out of the elevator on the wrong floor. And I was just standing there thinking, first of all, my legs are fucking massive, so check yourself. But second of all, what bothered me wasn't that what he said made no sense, it was that he didn't realize it made no sense. Like that guy left the interaction thinking his smoldering Ryan Gosling impression left me trembling at his raw masculinity. When in reality, I left the interaction by going right back up to my apartment to Google small talk tutorials because he was so confident that I figured it must have been me who was missing something. <laughs> and what I learned from that experience and the subsequent WikiHow articles is that when I talk to a stranger, I usually see it as a chance to screw things up. So I don't do it. And the guy talking to me in the elevator usually sees talking to a stranger as a chance to succeed and make everyone's day better. Chance, of course, being the operative word. Fortunately for me, what's made me feel a lot better is thinking, you know, I remember all of my own blunders, but I never remember anyone else's. That means they probably remember their blunders and don't remember any of mine. And what really confirmed that theory was talking to a friend one time I said, you know, dude, I just can't stop worrying about what other people think of me. And he said, don't worry, man, no one thinks about you. It is an extension of believing you'll succeed or worrying you'll fail. What I've learned is that there are really two types of people you'll encounter. People who don't filter themselves enough and people who filter themselves too much. And first of all, there's really only one type of person who has absolutely no filter and society only tolerates them because we've all been there at one point the or trunk. another. They can't walk in a straight line, they can't speak a coherent sentence, and they don't even remember any of it because their brain is so impaired. The drunk. I'm of course talking about children. Oh, and while the solution shit. of dealing with a child is of course alcohol, it is unfortunately the cause as well, so you have to be careful. <laughs> Beyond that, in all other circumstances where someone still has no filter and just says whatever dumb shit comes to their mind no matter what, it's best just to say, thanks for the Twitch Prime, and move on. So, the next scenario is when someone overfilters what they say and rarely talks. And most people think that what you're supposed to do here is ask the person questions to get them talking. This counterintuitively makes things worse and is like trying to get someone to open up and make friends by encouraging them to go to Toastmasters, because all that will do is make them even less cool. In my experience, what always works to help other people get out of this shell is a method called the six steps to social success. Step one, never make the conversation the focus have an activity to do. Two, offer silence. That's a good it's one. okay not to talk. Three, help the conversation. When they do talk, say yes and rather than no but. Four, offer reassurance. Say things like, ah, that's a really good way of saying it and I'm having a really good time. Five, move to a new environment. Have a beer and show them that you want to keep hanging out. Six, open up. Test the waters by sharing stories about yourself to get them to start opening up as well. From here, continue to listen and maintain eye contact as you gently rest your hand on their thigh. You might have noticed this is just a wiki how dating article that I copy pasted, but then I modified it to work on guys. Similarly, no. a common piece of advice you hear on the internet is that you should listen more than you speak. And while this works great until you meet another person who also learns social skills by reading- How was your trip? Not much, you. <laughs> <laughs> reading you'll find that if all you do is ask questions and listen people won't really make you their friend but they will make you their therapist 
And while it turns out that most people could definitely use one, it's not always so much fun for you. So I want to talk about some real conversation do's and don'ts that I've observed in actually socially competent people and not ones I've seen on Reddit that are from the same three books. Do remember things about people. One of my best experiences is when a guy was like, hey man, good to see you again. I looked up your channel and liked a couple of videos, even sent one to a friend. And I was like, did you subscribe? And he was like, of course. And just thinking about that story makes me feel good. I made it up, obviously, but it still gets me through the day. Uh, don't remember. I made it up, obviously, but it still gets me through the day. <laughs> but too much about people. Uh, despite how much you think it might work, do not go up to your crush and say, I remember when I first saw you across campus, sitting in the cafeteria, the light of your silver necklace reflecting the harsh flicker of the power saving LEDs beautifully through my 16 times optical zoom. I mean, it's kind of hot. Do have strong opinions. Don't share them at the wrong time. This is difficult because- That's very, very, very true. So I can't tell you how many times that's got me in trouble. Because being indifferent is super boring, but sharing your strong opinions is definitely risky. Great example is my mom, actually. <laughs> I'll be like, hey, Jan, how's your Airbnb going? And she'll be like, not good, Jamie. Guess where my guests for the next three days are from. And I'll be like, where and she'll be like south korea and i'll say what's wrong with that i love starcraft and she'll say they don't even speak english jamie it disgusts me and i'll be thinking oh no here we go but then she'll be like how am i supposed to have them for dinner and wine to ask about their culture if we can't even communicate i'll have to take korean on duolingo and I'll be thinking, oh, that's nice of you. I wasn't expect. That's why the American should have never left in 1953. And you know, classic Jan. And while I do try to listen more that I speak in this case, I do enjoy that I never know if she's inviting me for dinner or to throw a body in the Atlantic. Do amuse yourself. This one is pretty important because it means that no matter how- I am the king of this shit. On God. At the very least, you're going to be entertained by yourself. And with the exception of the guy in the elevator, it's almost always the case that when someone is self-amused, other people find them interesting as well. Take kids as an example. They're off in their own little world, minding their own business as the adults talk. But then when you look over and see one of them trying to figure out which Lego block tastes the best, you can't help but be amused yourself and think, ah, poor thing must have been vaccinated. Finally, the best conversation tip that I've noticed in only the most socially competent individuals is that what you actually say doesn't matter at all. Because again, no one actually remembers what you say. And when I think about who I like hanging out with the most, they don't say a word the whole time. And pretty much all they do is act happy to see me and fetch tennis balls when I throw them. I'm of course- Those make some of the best women ever, man. Of course talking about Roger Federer. But actually though, it made me realize, who gets the girls at parties? This guy. Who gets the guys at parties? This guy. Who makes friends every time they leave the house? This guy. Who remembers you? This guy. Who has strong opinions on the Korean War but knows when to share them? This guy. Who amuses themselves? This guy. And ultimately, who would you prefer to see in an elevator rather than Subaru Forester guy? That's right. Pretty much anyone. Well, there you have it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to comment, like, and or subscribe. It's your boy Blast from this HD. Again, there's some of the best dating advice on YouTube, man. Let me make sure to check out some more of these. I know it helps all of you guys out. Twizzles.